Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Venko Muyankov, and uh, I'm solutions architect at Storpool. In my daily work, uh, I spend a lot of time uh, listening to our customers and prospects. And one of the things that they tend to go on about is uh, how the traditional storage area network model, uh, even when built with a, a really good storage arrays, just doesn't work well for them at, uh, at scale. And uh, now we'll see eight of the most common flows of the traditional storage uh, uh, when it's deployed at uh, large scale clouds. Enterprise environment are usually fairly static. Uh, they uh, are with less frequent changes. Cloud environments, on the other hand, are much more dynamic. Uh, during the life cycle of a typical storage system that is three to five years, they can scale significantly. Very often, a cloud uh, will need to start uh, uh, with a very small capacity, relatively small capacity, that soon will be upgraded significantly. And uh, it is difficult to plan uh, for this several years ahead. The traditional storage arrays, uh, when it comes to scalability, are uh, limited. They can scale up by adding uh, shelves and drives to increase the capacity. Uh, but the system is limited uh, by the performance of the controllers and uh, the bandwidth of the buses and the uh, storage interfaces uh, uh, bandwidth. Ethernet is the primary protocol in uh, data centers, and uh, modern internet network, uh, networks are optimized for this use case. Uh, on the other hand, uh, fiber channel, uh, sorry, SAN architecture is built on fiber channel network. And this requires that you need to build a parallel uh, storage network uh, to your existing uh, Ethernet network. And large SANs. Uh, can be very expensive and difficult to build and to operate. Modern cloud data centers uh, operate in an uh, always-on uh, operation model. Uh, without uh, maintenance windows, applications uh, work 24 by 7. And uh, building an infrastructure uh, for uh, always-on uh, operation is not just about fault tolerance, it's about uh, everything you need to provide uh, reliability, high availability, and uh, data integrity. It includes uh, uh, such things like uh, uh, in-service uh, software upgrades, in-service hardware upgrades, uh, online reconfiguration. These are uh, all things that you just uh, can't get with the uh, most ordinary uh, SAN models. Um, storage controllers often becomes a uh, performance bottleneck in the traditional arrays. Uh, and if a controller becomes a, a performance bottleneck for your service, then uh, you have a, your choices are limited to basically three unpleasant options. First is uh, to upgrade the storage controller. Uh, that is uh, usually a disruptive operation. It, is, uh, it could be very expensive and not always possible. The second option is to upgrade the storage array uh, that is often referred uh, to as a, a forklift upgrade. That is basically replace the uh, storage appliance with a new model, more powerful model. Uh, again, this is a very complex task. Uh, we can see this later. Uh, it can be uh, expensive and uh, it almost always is service disruptive operation. And the most common uh, choice is uh, just to find a way to live with your limited performance. This means to uh, optimize uh, your applications, uh, to partition your cloud uh, into several systems, uh, do load balancing and a lot of stuff uh, to, to deal with the limited performance uh, you, uh, you have. So this makes your cloud uh, very complex and difficult to operate. Large scale or multi-rack uh, multi availability is something that is difficult to manage with a traditional arrays. Uh, for example, uh, taking several racks down to address a power issue uh, would require a major project with a synchronous replication with a, uh, with a SAN solution. 
and cloud prov providers can't afford to uh, have their customers down uh, even when the outage is uh, planned. After several years of operation, every hardware uh, has to be replaced. Replacing uh, compute nodes is a trivial task uh, because compute nodes are interchangeable. Replacing the uh, storage system, on the other hand, can be a cumbersome operation uh, that involves uh, uh, time-consuming uh, uh, data migration from one system to another. And uh, if the application uses integrated features uh, of the storage system, like uh, uh, snapshots and remote uh, uh, replication, it gets uh, even more difficult. In clouds, typically storage systems are tightly integrated with the cloud management uh, platform. And replacing the storage system uh, with a new model, often from a, a different uh, series or from a different vendor, with a, a different set of features, and uh, most importantly, with a different uh, integration interface, uh, will induce a new separate project to integrate the new system with your cloud management. Uh, what was initially a simple task of uh, hardware refresh uh, uh, cycle now becomes a complex uh, project that uh, involves uh, building an integration, data migration, and possibly uh, services uh, reconfiguration. Traditional storage arrays uh, generally have a slower adoption of uh, innovation compared to uh, industry standard servers. Uh, whether it's a uh, 100 gig Ethernet or uh, larger NVMe drives or uh, faster drives or uh, communication protocol like, uh, let's say, NVMe TCP, uh, all these are available in the specialized arrays uh, years after uh, these technologies are available in the general purpose uh, servers. The result of this is that uh, the storage arrays are uh, with smaller capacity, less storage density, uh, they, have, uh, uh, they consume more power, uh, are uh, more expensive to operate and uh, maintain and upgrade. Uh, they cannot provide the features that you need, and the end result is that they make your cloud services not competitive. Traditional race are also uh, difficult to manage at scale. By running multiple uh, separate storage appliances, uh, you always end up with uh, running many uh, multiple silos in uh, your cloud to take care of. And instead of focusing on uh, uh, improving your services, cloud and storage administrators are busy uh, more and more time dealing with issues that these uh, individual silos create, like uh, uh, capacity management, uh, load balancing, dealing with uh, hotspots, uh, optimizing uh, the, the traffic, uh, uh, inefficient utilization of available resources. So there are products that are uh, designed to address these problems, but these are partial solutions, and uh, it's better not to have these problems uh, in the first place. All this flows uh, comes from the fact that uh, the Sun architecture was designed for enterprise environment. It fits very well there, but clouds are very different from enterprise environment. They have a different requirement and uh, they need a, a new different type of storage. Storage that is designed from the, from the ground up for, for this specific uh, use case and not retrofitted from uh, another use case. So thank you for your attention, and I'll be happy to hear uh, your thoughts about, uh, uh, about this and about operating Sun in a cloud environment. Uh, do you have, uh, uh, what are the most challenging uh, part that uh, you see with, uh, with Sun in this environment? And uh, yeah, do you, do, do you see some of this uh, in, in your uh, daily, daily work? Thank you.